Hey guys, what's going on? So let me show you one more badass way to segment your list. So far we've talked about how to set up a basic opens and clicks segment, how to segment your hyper responsives, and also how to segment based off a of specific interest. But what we haven't talked about is specifics on segmentation based on your funnel. What happens if a person gets to a specific point in your funnel and you want to have a different conversation with them via email? Let's say, for instance, a person that gets your order form and doesn't purchase, or a person that does purchase and you want to say different things to them than if they did. Well, how do we create that segment? Well, you do that in your autoresponder, just like you create the other segments, but it's a little bit more advanced, so I'll quote unquote advanced, because we got to fiddle with a little bit of HTML here. So with that said, I anticipate this video might take a little bit longer than the others. It might not. We'll just see. And if you're not all that comfortable with HTML stuff, honestly, you should just take some time to fiddle around until you are comfortable because it's not complicated. You can't break anything. And even with that being said, I'll have some videos here for you that walk you through all that stuff. So you'll be taken care of. So let me show you how to create a segment. Let's say a person was going to your order form or purchase and you wanted to segment those people and have different conversations. Here's how you do it. So instead of starting here uh, where we started before, we want to go here first. Go to statistics, email analytics, and what we want to do is we want to set up what are called goals. And a goal is a person getting to a specific point and your autoresponder will know that and then boom you can segment based off that. So we go to settings, click goals down here, and I've already set this up. Uh, you know how it is, like you, you shoot a video and then, oh, the audio wasn't on. Well, there goes that. So I've already walked through this process one time. What I'll do is I'll do it one more time. Uh, let's actually look here. So we're gonna fiddle with a little bit of HTML stuff. So let me choose a whole new website to do this on. By the way, this is my FTP program. It's called Transmit. Let's see what pages, what websites we have on here. Hmm. There's not really a bunch that I want to fiddle around with here. So here's what we'll do. The segment that I had created previously, we're just going to go here, go ahead here, and we're going to delete it, and we're going to start it over from scratch. Boom. So if you want to create a segment, first off, here's a live example in one of my funnels. On this, in this demo. Um, this is the funnel. It's on a domain called 30checks.com. And this page has a goal, is a goal, and I've got all the code and all that stuff right, so I know specifically which subscribers get here. And from that point, I can talk to them about different stuff. The cool thing is, is inside of my GetResponse account right here, you can see that 33 people reached this goal, and the value is set to 66. We'll talk about that in a minute. But because my autoresponder knows that there are specifically 33 people that got here, now I can segment them differently and have a different conversation with them. So that's a real life example. Um, but how do you set it up? Let's start over and do it from scratch. So we'll do this on my maximum leverage domain, as I had done before. So you click Create New Profile, of course. And uh, then you give your profile a name. It doesn't matter what the name is. I just am using the domain name because it's just easier. I'll forget less. Then what we want to do is we want to take this code, control A, select all, control C, copy all. And we want to at least put this code on our index page. All right. So I'm going to pull up my trusty, dusty FTP program. And again, this stuff we'll talk about later. I want to find my index page, open it up. And I want to put this code right down at the bottom. You see, our, I've already done it, so I'm deleting it and I'm putting in the new code. Bada bing, bada boom. Right above the closing body tag. So the less than sign, forward slash, the word body, greater than sign. Right above that, where you see that. Place that code. I'm saving it. Command C. Command S, excuse me. So we should be good to go there. Now I click check status. Ha ha, we are, we're good to go. All right, so now we can 
get into the nitty gritty and actually define our goal. So for demonstration's purpose, let me just pick a page on this domain, just an easy page. Um, let's go with index-deposits.com, all right? What we wanna do is we wanna take that same exact code that I just put on the index page, and we wanna also put that at the bottom of the page we want it defined as a goal, okay? And I'll show you why. Because when we go in here to create a goal, that code's gotta be there because uh, the autoresponder has to check it and say, oh, yep, the code's there. So we'll call this goal visitor. The goal name for you might be, you know, order form viewer, order form abandoner, purchaser, new customer, new client, wh whatever it might be, new subscriber. We'll just call it visitor for now. We click on, leave that as is. And then we just simply change this part to index-deposits. Was it index-deposit or deposits? Let me see here. Ah, with an S. Dot HTML. Now the goal value. This is another cool thing here. Um, you can define the value. Like let's say you were selling something that was 100 bucks. You could define the value as $100 if you set a goal on the page right after people purchase. So then your autoresponder would know, here are all the people that gave you hundred bucks and which emails led to that purchase, which is pretty cool. That's where you can really start to create an incredibly powerful autoresponder sequence when you know that sort of stuff. So click save, haha, -ha, we're good to go. So that's all, we, that's all we gotta do. We've now defined the goal. Now to create that segment, we just go back and we do what we've done before, All right? So we go into our contacts and we want to go to, well, first off, add new segment just to make sure we're starting from scratch. And we wanna to go to all subscribers. And now down here, we wanna select goals and then we just choose our goal. Now, since we just set up that goal, and we're going to select uh, greater than or equals one because we set the goal value as 100, right? So greater than one means they got there. Um, because we just set this up, you know, it's going to show zero. So, it, but that's all you would do. And then you collect, you just, you know, name the segment and save it and bada bing, bada boom. You can use it for later. Um, but so you can see this in a live example. Let's go to that other goal that I set, and let's say greater than or equal to one, same thing. And you can see there's still currently 22 subscribers on my list that reach that goal. And now I know who they are, and I can send them specific emails. That's really all there is to it, to segment based off of goals. Um, yeah, that's it. So questions, comments, let me know. There's all sorts of different ways that we can slice and dice and segment our list, but I think with this sort of a primer, man, you're, you've got some powerful tools at play, and it should get your imagination going. It should get you excited. It, it definitely did for me when I first learned this stuff. So as new stuff comes along, and I think it's uh, worth pulling up the video and, and showing you how to do it, I'll definitely do that based on segmentation, but this is like definitely a lot of firepower. 99% of marketers do not do this stuff. So for you, this is, this is absolutely an asset, something you can use that will give you an advantage in the game. So yeah, let me know uh, if you got any questions, any comments, anything. And um, yeah, any, any cool ways that you know how to segment, you know? And that's it.